Hey, good people. This is Jeff again with some Horseback Wisdom. <clears throat> I wanted to talk to you real quick about uh, Galatians 6, 4, and 6, 5. So if you have your Bibles, pull that open or pull up your phone or whatever you do to have access to the Word of God. So the Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Galatia. This is in Central Asia. And um, so some teachers, false teachers, had come into this church and started teaching them things that were not true. Uh, exactly what we see in a lot of places today on television and everywhere else. Um, folks, you need to be able to discern the Word of God for yourself. If you go to a church where they don't open the Bible and teach straight from the Bible, it's okay to talk about other things, some things that other preachers have said and that sort of stuff, but you have to run every single thing that your pastor tells you by the Word of God. And if they teach you anything that's not in the Word of God, throw it out. Unless they're doing a you know, message on how to change the oil in your car or something. <clears throat> but anyway... Galatians 6, 4, let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. But in Galatians 6, 2, it says, bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Well, isn't that a contradiction? Right? Bear one another's burdens, but then every man shall bear his own burden. And for those of you that are new to the Bible, in the King James Version, which is really the version you should be reading, <clears throat> when it says man, it means mankind. Um, so anyway. Um, well, the first example in verse 6-2 where it says, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's talking about helping someone get out of sin. Because right before that it says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you that are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. In other words, if, if a member of your fellowship is in sin, go to them in meekness. If you have a, a spiritual strength and try to restore them, and by that bear their burden, right? That's what that's talking about. But in verse 4, he says, let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Let every, for every man shall bear his own burden. For every person shall bear their own burden. So why is this important? Well, every person has to prove their own work. Everybody and the burdens that I bear are not going to be the burdens that you bear. You might have burdens that I couldn't bear. <clears throat> and I might have burdens that you couldn't bear. Um, and so we have to bear those of ourselves. But you have to bear them. Right? And you can ask God what those burdens are if you don't know, if you're puzzled. I've done that. I've said, God, you know, Jesus said, take up your cross daily and follow me. There are some things I know that are a burden to me. There are some things I know that are a cross to me. Now, I don't struggle with things that a lot of people struggle with, alcohol, drugs, smoking, pornography. I don't struggle with any of that stuff. I don't really struggle with anger a lot. I do have anger, and I do have to repent of it, but I struggle with other things. And I have to bear my own burden. Nobody else can bear that for me. In our culture now, people want all of society to bear their own burden, right? You have these professors teaching people at universities that there's a systemic racism in the world. That uh, depending on whatever ethnicity you happen to be, everyone's against you because you look a certain way. Or your skin may have a different tone than someone else. That's crazy. And that doesn't mean that there aren't people that think badly of you for whatever reason. But that's always been the case. Um, but you can't get other people to bear your own burden. But we have millions and millions of people in America right now that either want to escape their burden through drugs and alcohol, uh, through the fentanyl and, and, and 
meth that's flowing across the border because the government won't shut the border. And that's intentional, by the way. They want to escape through that, or they want to escape through the internet, or they want to escape through social media, or they want to escape through many things, and or whatever it is, and they don't want to bear their own burden. That doesn't mean we should go looking for burdens to bear, but we're going to have them anyway. You don't got, you don't have to look. You're going to have burdens. Just being alive on this planet, being in a relationship with other human beings, you're going to have burdens. So a couple things I would say about that. Number one, bear your own burdens. Now, Jesus said, all you who are weary and heavy laden, come unto me and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What does that mean? That means you can give your burden to Jesus and he will help you bear it. He'll give you his yoke, which isn't the yoke of other people. It's not the demands of everybody else in your family on you, right? It's Jesus helping to carry that. It's the, it's the demands of Jesus, which is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. But you're going to bear that burden. You have to. What are the alternatives? Well, you escape. But what happens then? Then the devil gets a hold of you. In your mind. And your body. People escape through food. People escape through whatever. <sighs> Don't do that. Put that aside. And bear your own burden. Why? Why? Because it says, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone. In other words, when you bear your burdens, God is going to rejoice. The angels are going to rejoice. It may not happen until you leave here or Jesus comes again. But there's going to be a rejoicing in how you bore those burdens. I'll give you a quick story. I had a dear friend who, um, through a strange uh, happening, um, was diagnosed with a extremely serious brain tumor. He was a strong believer in Jesus, <coughs> but he did have some strange theology. Anyway, he went through an experimental procedure where they removed a third of his brain and they inserted golden pellets into his brain that were radioactive. Um... So it seriously impacted him in many ways and ended up taking his life after a time. But talking about bearing your own burdens, he said the Lord gave him a vision of what it's really going to be like in heaven. You know, Jesus went into the temple in Jerusalem and he saw this rich, wealthy Pharisee giving uh, huge amounts of money and people would go there and just with these big entourages and, and give coins and let them clink into the coffers. And then this one little old widow woman went and put a penny in there. And Jesus said that widow woman gave more than all these other people. And people were like, what are you talking about? She just put a penny. He said they gave out of their abundance, but she gave everything she had. She bore her burden. So my friend said that he had a vision, and this is what he said. He said, when we get to heaven, he said, what's amazing is there's going to be these crowds of people that are looking at this unbelievable mansion that's just miles long and so high you can't even see the top of it. And people are going to think, that's surely that's got to be the mansion of Billy Graham, or that's got to be the mansion of Mother Teresa, or that's got to be the mansion of, of uh, Reinhard Bonnke, or some other godly evangelist, true evangelist, Catherine Kuhlman. And he said, everyone's going to be like, that's got to be her, their place. But as they get closer to it, walk through the crowd, they're going to find out, that was the home of some little lady that no one ever heard of, who never was married, never had any children, 
and she worked cleaning houses for people. But every single day, she spent all day in prayer ministering to the Lord. She was kind to everyone she met. She was kind to her mom and dad. She cared for them when they were old and feeble. And she shared the word of God with everyone. And that's her mansion because she bore her burden, just like that widow woman bore her burden. So the lesson for today is bear your burdens. Don't let it become... So, And the scripture teaching you to bear your burdens, Paul writing that in Galatians, means you can't bear your burdens. There was a time in my life when I had a burden that I was that I, that was far too much for me to bear. I gave it to the Lord; He got me through it. But I didn't do a very good job of bearing it. So the other thing I would say is, don't allow condemnation to come into your life if you have a challenge in bearing your burden. But don't allow that to be an excuse either, right? Everybody wants to run on Dr. Phil and talk about how horrible their lives are. Folks, if you're alive today, your life is not horrible in most cases. Now, some of you are dealing with some stuff, right? I heard a testimony yesterday of a young man whose mother used to beat him until he bled with a leather strap. Yeah, he had a horrible life as a kid. But... We don't live in an age where the Black Plague is going to kill 75% of everybody in our city. We don't live in a place in an age when, when starvation is going to kill millions of people around us. Um, we live in an age of mostly, and especially in the West, I'm not speaking to the people that live in Sub-Saharan Africa, <clears throat> or the... Uh, most of the, much of the Muslim world who are struggling, but that's for different reasons. That's not because that's just how it came about. It's because you have wicked people running your deal. We have wicked people running our deal, but praise God, he, our founding fathers made a way for us to get around that. Anyway, I digress. Don't beat yourself up. The Bible says there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So if you're having a challenge bearing your burden, ask God to help you bear it. He will. But bear your burden. Don't escape. Don't turn away. Bear it. And at the end, there will be rejoicing in yourself. Love you and be blessed.